This is a special presentation of EA Sports from the Coliseum in Oakland. Our tribute to the coach, the John Madden Legacy Game. I'm Brandon Gaughan here to take you through the proceedings. And coming up, we're going to tell the story of a man who was truly larger than life and whose impact on the sport of football certainly is going to live on for decades and decades to come. Now, we've assembled a couple of rosters featuring some of Coach's favorite players from both yesterday and today. And Coach himself will be on the sidelines for both squads, trying to motivate his guys to victory. And I'm joined now by my good friend Charles Davis. CD, your thoughts on John Madden and what he meant to the sport he loved so much. For me, Brandon, it's the word joy. He brought that to the game of football, brought the game to so many people. He stayed involved his entire life. And moving forward, when you think of football, you're always going to think John Madden. One time for old times. What do you we play some football as we are underway from Oakland in the John Madden Legacy game. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. So it's the NFC Stars who will get the ball first. And Charles, as we alluded to, we've got a different era of coach on each sideline. So the man coaching this NFC squad, we'll call him Young John Madden. This is a coach who was trying to establish a foothold in the NFL and on the cusp of doing it very successfully. Yeah, you think back to that period, those early days as the coach of the Raiders, the late 60s in the AFL and then in the NFL in the early 70s, Coach was a guy who was ahead of his time. The Raiders were one of the first teams to have mini camps, one of the first to film practice because he wanted to practice coaching as much as he could. And his teams, they were successful right from the start of his head coaching tenure. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. It'll be Sanders to begin the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. So as we mentioned at the top, let's take you through the life of John Madden. And you know, it's very fitting that we're here back in the Bay Area, not just because John's so associated with Raider football, but also because this was where he spent his formative years. Yeah, he grew up over Daly City with his buddy John Robinson, who will also become an NFL head coach. And he played his high school ball at Jefferson High, eventually wound up playing tackle at the University of Oregon and later Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Played well enough that in 1958, he was a 21st round draft pick of the Philadelphia Eagles. That's right, the draft had 30 rounds then. But Charles, you mentioned Coach was a 21st round draft pick back in 1958. It was the Philadelphia Eagles who selected him. But unfortunately for John, knee problems, they just continued to dog him. He was hurt in his first training camp. Actually never saw the field as a player in the NFL. But it was still during his time with the Eagles. You and I were talking about this before going on air. That you could start to see the light bulb going on for what his career path might entail. And it went on in a big way, didn't it? Because... While he was rehabbing his knee, he started to spend a lot of time breaking down film with the Eagles with quarterback Norm Van Brocklin, the future Hall of Famer and future head coach in the NFL. Remember, Van Brocklin coached with the Falcons, he coached with the Vikings. It was there during that time. I think Coach Madden realized his love of football and love for teaching, combining all that together, and that meant being a football coach. So in 1960, began his coaching career at a small college south of San Luis Obispo called Alan Hancock, and then later at San Diego State University under another legendary coach, the guy who could throw it around pretty well, Don Coriel. Shotgun snap, and then the give to Sanders. They'll get it to the 23-yard line. And Charles, you know, it was in the early 1960s that a young John Madden made the acquaintance of the owner of the Oakland Raiders, one Al Davis, of course, and the two, they really bonded, would become one of the best owners coach duos in NFL history and to take it a step further Al Davis became someone who John referred to as his best friend yeah in 1967 Brandon Al Davis hired coach Madden to be a linebackers coach remember this was still the AFL at that point we had not merged totally with the NFL and coach Madden he paid dividends almost immediately helped the Raiders win the AFL title in 1968 and that meant a date with the Green Bay Packers in what was now known as Super Bowl II but by 1969, at the age of 32, just 32, Brandon, 
John Madison, the man of head coach of the Oakland Raiders. And what a ride. He, the Raiders, and the NFL were about to go on. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Another run here with Sanders. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. It's a second down run with Sanders, and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. They got five through the air last play, now five on the ground, first and ten. I know flashy plays, splashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game, and I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back -back five yard gains, didn't force the ball downfield, picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line. And he will carry this one in, touchdown <laughs> NFC. Eric Dickerson punching it in from a yard away. And the NFC has taken the early lead. Quite the drive there to get things started. They took up the bulk of the first quarter. And they end up in the end zone. And I love your last point. Ended up in the end zone. Because a lot of teams like those long drives, especially to keep their offense off the field, right? Keep the ball away from them. But they finished it with a touchdown. That's the exclamation point. Now flip it over defensively. They've got to slow that down somehow, right? Maybe they need to be a little more aggressive. Maybe a few more pressures towards the quarterback. Extra point by Anderson, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. And Hall not going to bring this one out. So, Charles, as mentioned, we've got another Coach Madden over here on the AFC sideline. Of course, his Raiders, members of the AFC West. So this is a conference he battled in for his entire career. And you think about the landscape of the NFL as he was getting into the back half of his tenure. It was a golden era for coaches. You had Don Shula, Tom Landry, Chuck Knoll, Bud Grant. But it was John Madden who had the best winning percentage of them all, CD. 759, the best ever. Brandon, it's hard to believe he could be so successful in a conference with all those great teams. The Steelers won four Super Bowls. The Dolphins won two and were a mainstay in the playoffs. The Colts were tough. The Broncos came on late and went to a Super Bowl themselves. But against Hall of Fame coaches, John Madden's record, 36-16-2. That's pretty incredible. His Raiders were a factor each and every year. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Charles, you talked about John Madden and the Raiders going on a ride. Well, try these numbers on for size. In 10 seasons as a head coach, the Raiders won their division seven times. They finished second the other three times, and he became the youngest coach to amass 100 career regular season victories and is still, to this day, the franchise leader and wins. And when you think about it, that's where that rivalry with Kansas City really took root, as did the expression commitment to excellence. And boy, was it personified by the players who played for Coach Madden. On offense, how about quarterback Kenny Stable, wide receiver Cliff Branch, wide receiver Fred Belitnikoff, tight end Dave Casper, to name a few. How about those great linemen he had? Center Jim Otto, guard Gene Upshaw, tackle Art Shell, all of them in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And guys on the defensive side of the ball, the mad stork himself, Ted Hendricks, Willie Brown, John Matuzak, Otis Sistrunk, and Big Ben Davidson. So many great players, so many great memories. And it looks 
looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. And this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. Well, two snaps ago, I don't think anyone thought a safety was on the table. Yet, it happened. They caught him on back-to-back -back plays breaking through the line. No amount of evading was going to save him from a sack on either play. And on the last one, he ran too deep into the end zone to set up the safety. Now the free kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here. On oh, the return is Williams. At some point, we're going to get it through our heads. Special teams, special teams, special teams. The spark that often wins games. Now the NFC offense coming out here, and you know Charles, Coach Madden always said that if he had one drive to win a game and he had to pick a quarterback, he would pick Kenny Stabler. But I think if you asked him to omit any of his Raiders players, there's a good chance the guy he'd select would be Brett Favre. Brett Favre is always smiling. He's always laughing. He's always talking to someone. He remembers that it's a game. And if it's a game, you should have fun. And Brandon, that always reminds me of a great movie line where one of the players was telling the coach, every time I say it's a game, you say it's a business. And every time I say it's a business, you say it's a game. With coach, it was always a game. They throw right away, and that's complete out on the right side. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Charles, you think about all the success that John Madden had as an NFL head coach, and he had plenty, and we talked about it, including the 10 straight winning seasons, a Super Bowl title. But like any great coach, he also suffered through a few tough losses along the way as well. And Brandon, those tough losses came in high-stakes games because... They always had such great success. Think about it. And touchdown! Randy Moss, 54 yards. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field and you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Now to try to add the extra point to Lefty Anderson. And that will make this a 16-point lead. Pretty clean and simple there. Just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. Taking it about the one. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So the AFC making their way out, and it's one of Coach's favorites, another local guy, Tom Brady, who will be at the controls. And boy, Coach always admired the way number 12 could run an offense, and especially his ability to stay calm under pressure. Tom Brady is a guy who's always looking downfield. He never looks at the rush. He hangs in the pocket, and he makes a throw. He's a cool guy, and he's a tough guy. Let me tell you, there's no one calmer in the pocket than Tom Brady. And I know that Coach has a great appreciation for Tom Brady, who turned 45 back on August 3rd because Coach coached a guy like him in uh, George Blanda, who played a long time in the NFL. In this game, it features legends and active players. Tom Brady qualifies as both. 
And his throw is incomplete. The CD we spoke of some of the Raiders' tough playoff losses through the decade of the 70s, but for one shining season, they put it all together, and that was 1976. You remember a 13-1 regular season, a memorable playoff win over New England. They dominated the Steelers 24-7 in the AFC title game, and then a meeting with the Minnesota Vikings in Super Bowl XI. Oh, Brandon, what a game that was down at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. A gorgeous 53-degree day, perfect for football. Raiders got out to a 16-0 lead at the half, and Clarence Davis, no relation, although I would certainly claim it, strong on the ground, 137 yards rushing. How about Freddie Blitnikoff, the MVP of that game, catching everything that came his way. Kenny Stable running the offense with precision, and we all remember the one that sealed it. The grand old man himself, Willie Brown, with the laser-focused eyes, picking off Fran Tarkenton, and taking a 75 yards for a touchdown. 32 to 14, the final score. Raiders had their first Super Bowl title, and we got the iconic shot of Coach Madden being lifted on the shoulder pads of his players and carried aloft as a Super Bowl champ. On is the Hall of Famer Ray Guy to punt this away on fourth down. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. A 46-yard punt, eight yards on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Now the NFC heading back out. Hall of Famer Randy Moss, a part of this offense. And Coach Madden, boy, he always appreciated the ferociousness with which number 84 attacked the football in the air. As Randy Moss says, just chunk it up there, dog, and I'll go get it. And coach, boy, did he ever go get it. Over 15,000 receiving yards, 156 touchdowns. And how about this, from his rookie year of 1998 until 2009, those were his prime seasons, right? He led the league in touchdowns five times, but even more so. He showed us all how to go up and get it. Great body control. No one's ever done it better playing the ball in the air. Uh, they'll throw on first down with Favre. Over the middle, that's caught by Rice. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. So, Charles, after that Super Bowl title in the 76 season, the Raiders again advanced to the AFC Championship game the following year, but they fell to the Denver Broncos on New Year's Day by a field goal, and that ended their chances for back-to-back -back titles. And then in 1978, after missing out on the playoffs in that season, John Madden, he actually stepped down as coach of the Raiders January 4th, 1979. Yeah, and that was a surprise for the league because remember, Brandon, he coached 10 seasons in the NFL, but he would put everything he had into the Oakland Raiders, into being a head football coach, into guiding, mentoring, loving his players. And he just sort of felt like it was the right time to step away. And even though he was just 42 when he left, even though there would be overtures for a return to coaching in the future, many overtures, he never returned to the sideline. Now, even though he didn't, we all know his work with the NFL was far from finished, and a lot of chapters of the John Madden story were still left to be written. And he whips that one incomplete there. And close there, he caught it, just wasn't able to stay in bounds. And that's where the sideline, it was used as a 12th defender. You know, 11's legal. This one is an imaginary one, one that my college coach used to call Sammy Sideline. <laughs> Sammy Sideline can protect you at times, and in this case, that's exactly what he did for the defenders. They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Here's Farb to throw. Man open, it's Moss complete. And they're gonna get this down near the 35-yard line. But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Favre. And on the catch right side, this is Sanders. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. 
They'll give him four yards there, and that's going to bring up second down. To throw as far. That'll be caught over the middle by Moss. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Now the NFC going to call the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Throwing is far. And that's complete to Sanders. Touchdown! 25 yards for the touchdown. As his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. Anderson on for the extra point. And that PAT pushes the lead up to 23 now. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it's finished off by an NFC touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The AFC offense heading back out. You know, Charles, Coach really loved to utilize his tight ends in the passing game. You think about Dave Casper, Hall of Famer for those great Raider teams. And I think he saw a lot of Dave Casper in an all-Madden staple, Tony Gonzalez. Tony Gonzalez is the type of tight end I think everyone's looking for. He's a guy that can make some big plays from that tight end position. Let me tell you, you better make sure you have him accounted for on every play. And that's exactly right, because Dave Casper, he could shred defenses down the middle of the field. And that's exactly what Tony Gonzalez did in his entire career, a 14-time Pro Bowl selection. Only Tom Brady has more. There are six guys in the 15,000-yard receiving club. He's the only tight end in there. Tony Gonzalez, every snap, he had to know where he was because he could make plays short, medium, and long, and often put the ball in the end zone. Now the AFC going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Brady. And can you believe it? It's a second safety in this ball game. Right now, they're just trying to get to halftime because they need a break. This game, it's been a shellacking in every way, and they just got driven backwards for a safety.
After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. Here's Hester. Pretty move. The offense for the NFC ready to get their next drive started. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the shotgun, it's Favre. And once again, this is Sanders. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. So it was already a gain on the completion, but tack on some more with that penalty. Absolutely, and no matter what angle you're making a tackle from, you can't grab the face mask, and that's just putting your defense on its heels just a little bit more. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. Anderson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So everything else has gone right in this first half. Kind of follows that it would for their kicker, too, as he adds three more onto the lead. Yeah, and the way that this one's gone, definitely not looking like he's going to have to worry too much about pressure kicks late in the game. He can go out there free and easy, just work on his form, and he knocked that one through. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. Taken in at the three. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So already not the best to kick returns there, but that penalty, that adds insult to injury and backs him up even closer to the goal line. Yeah, not ideal field position to begin a drive, is it? Because the extra pressure now goes on the offense. They've got to get some early yards and get away from the shadow of their own goal post. What every offense wants to do in this situation, get two first downs to help out with field position at the least. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we are at halftime of the John Madden Legacy game, and now we present a special tribute to the man of the hour, narrated by the Raiders' own Trey Mosley. What comes to mind when you hear the name Madden? Is it the coach who led the Raiders to their first Super Bowl victory? Perhaps it's the broadcaster who entertained millions of fans. Or maybe it's the video game known simply by his name. But no matter what comes to mind when you hear the name Madden, everyone thinks of one thing. Football. The core of it was football. It's the greatest game in the world. The left goes to the right, the right goes to the left. Madden is on the field. He wants to know if it's real. In my 
my mind, John Madden is the most important figure in the history of professional football. Show me somebody else who did it on three levels the way John did it. There's nobody. Boy, Charles, yeah, that's, that is really well done. Coach was something else, wasn't he? I'm reminded what Al Davis said when he was inducting coach into Pro Football Hall of Fame, Brandon. He loved the game. He loved his team. He loved the Raiders. He loved this league. And you can see it with everything he does. No doubt. But it's quite possible, though, that now he would say, hey, enough of that. Let's play some football. Now the second half, forthcoming from Oakland. The AFC going to get the football first here as we are back underway from Oakland in the John Madden Legacy game. Dante Hall going to bring it out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. The AFC offense set to take their next drive. The CD, they certainly know the hole that they face as they begin the second half. They have to do what precious few teams have done in NFL history. That's try to come back from a four-possession deficit. And partner, you know as that team gathers, they're saying to each other, you'd never say never, right? Because if you're on an NFL roster, that's how you have to think. You can always come back and win a ball game. But let's face it, we saw a certain Super Bowl a 25-point lead late that wasn't enough to put someone away. But that being said, this task is near impossible. Let's face it. And bottom line is, it officially becomes impossible if this possession is an empty one. The fridge, William Perry, never giving up. He works his way to the QB for a loss of 12. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. On third and long, it's Brady. And for the third time now, this is going to wind up a safety. Unbelievable. Well, two snaps ago, I don't think anyone thought a safety was on the table, yet it happened. They caught him on back-to-back -back plays, breaking through the line. No amount of evading was going to save him from a sack on either play. And on the last one, he ran too deep into the end zone to set up the safety. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. On the return, Hester. Skirts by him at the 35. But one thing I know for sure, the standard speech is to treat the game like it's tied. But when you have an advantage, they also tell you, make sure you don't get your foot off the gas. Message received. Ready to begin their next drive here, the NFC offense. And it's hard to imagine that the first half could have gone any better for them. So what's the approach here in the second half? Just continue to play smart football because they get the other team down and they feel good about the position they're in. The obvious thing people would say is just keep attacking, but I think you also have to be smart about it. Avoid turnovers. That's about the only thing that can derail you at this point. Attack, but make sure you take care of the ball. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Looking to throw. Jerry Rice, open right side. Touchdown! Jerry Rice! 
39 yards. And the NFC stretching that lead out even a bit further. Boy, another score. This lead gets even bigger. And Charles, we haven't even hit the fourth quarter yet. Well, forget the deficit, right? They're really not going to cut into that a heck of a lot. But how can they get out of here with some dignity? Can they get a stop or two? Can they make a play on offense themselves? Anything to start to feel better about what's happened to them here in this one. Now to try to add the extra point to Lefty Anderson. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. Following the touchdown, here's Anderson to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The offense for the AFC set to go now. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable now. A win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles, but I, I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But, Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. To throw again on second down. Brady. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Kevin Green picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. We've seen it demonstrated time and time again to the tune of seven sacks in this game thus far. and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Here's Ray Guy now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And he'll take it just outside the 40. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And the NFC is going to have a short field as they take over first and 10. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Rice. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. So now, Charles, to pick up the story we've been telling, John Madden at 42. He just completed a 10-year stint as the coach of the Raiders. He wants to step away a bit from the grind of coaching, but he doesn't want to step away from the game of football. So he ends up signing on with CBS in 1979 to try his hand at broadcasting. And much like his coaching career, he was pretty much an instant success. 
Partner, he really connected with the people right from the start, and people may not remember, he wasn't even on the number one team in the beginning. He worked his way up. But the same things that made him a great coach made him a great broadcaster. The ability to show the big picture, yet break it down into the details. That's what he did with his teams. That's what he did with the people. That way, he was simple to understand, yet insightful for viewers. And he did with that big personality that he had, one that connected with everyone. And it's far. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit. A lot of people making plays behind him in the field. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now Morton Anderson for the field goal try. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. Anderson's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So tack on three more, though this, it's just a rare drive where they did not find the end zone. Yeah, you're right about that, partner. But at this point, I don't think you're too concerned about that. You just want to possess the football for a while and drain the clock. If you can get three out of it, that's great, too. the made field goal. Anderson back out to kick it away. Here comes Hall. He's going to bring it out. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. offense set to take their next drive. Well, the disparity in this game, it just seems to grow with each possession here, Charles. They are really struggling. They have not put up a single point, and on the other side, the points keep piling up and up and up. So you know the frustration level has to be rising, right? So they've got to find a way to quell that, because otherwise, they certainly won't get anything done in this one. Keep diving deeper into the offensive playbook, but bottom line is, don't quit competing. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Brady. Well, the NFC pressure a little too much as they get home for the sack. Lawrence Taylor able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. But one thing I do know, these guys on defense, they don't want this game to end. They're winning by multiple touchdowns. They've shut down the opposing quarterback in a big way, and they're still picking up sacks as we approach the end of this one. And this offense on third down today, not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This is third and 14. They shakes him off. Sideline throw, it's tipped, but he's still got it. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Able to convert on third and 14, a terrific play call. At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. Wait, 
The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and 10. Now Brady. Under pressure, and down he goes. Lawrence Taylor, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Well, it's obvious, but I can't help but say it here. It's never a good day when the opposing defense has more sacks than you have points. The win seems likely, but this defense is still playing for something here. They see that zero on the scoreboard, and they don't want that to change. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Here's Brady to throw. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. Lawrence Taylor in there again as he's able to pick up sacks on both first and second down. So for Coach Madden, Charles, you know, by 1981, his broadcasting career is really taking off. He's elevated to the network's number one booth that calls all the big matchups. And he gets the plum assignment of calling Super Bowl 16, 49ers and Bengals, and he's teamed up with Pat Summerall. And that pairing ultimately would go on to be one of the most influential in sports broadcasting history influential not just in us listening to them remember they went on and called eight Super Bowls together but how they put together kind of the template that all of us broadcasters follow now sitting down with the head coaches and the quarterbacks and the stars of each team before a ball game to get extra information and the way that those two paired together Pat Summerall short concise to the point and turned it over to coach Madden to fill in all the big details So two minutes to play in the John Madden legacy game and the NFC well in control. And we'll be back to Oakland after this. So the AFC with the football as we welcome you back. They come up on a fourth down situation with things not looking particularly rosy. Here's Ray Guy now standing right on his own five yard line. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and one more time. 21 yards well done on the return and this offense they're going to have excellent field position they take over with a first and 10 on the short side of the field on first and 10 it's Sanders and he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. As you mentioned, CD, talking about John Madden, the broadcaster, he called eight Super Bowls with Pat Summerall, three more with Al Michaels later in his career. He spent nearly three decades in the booth, all told. And not only was he beloved for his mannerisms, we know that, but he was an innovator as well. Yeah, Brandon, you're talking about things like the Telestrator, which totally became identified with him. And now it's a staple for all analysts to have in the booth. And then you think about things like Turducken on Thanksgiving. When he used words like boom and pow. He helped create the old Madden team. He was a very popular commercial pitch man. And even the Madden Cruiser was unique. And you had to be someone to get a ride on it, too. They'll go again with Sanders. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. So it's a win here for the NFC. Just an incredible afternoon of football and remembering the life of John Madden. 
And before we go, one final message. And for all of us at EA Sports, this one's for you, Coach. I just say this, I thank you all very much. This has been the sweetest ride of them all.